Hey everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. Today, we're gonna to show you how you can make 10 starters at once, or maybe even more. We're gonna talk about canning condensed wort. And many of you like to think of those as stuff like fast pitch or proper starters. Well, did you know that you can do a DIY version of that yourself? You can. I'm gonna show you how to do that after you hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer, and then we'll get after it. All right, so let's talk about what you're gonna need in order to get this thing started. First and foremost, and the most important, is actually having a pressure canner, okay? Just like this one here. This one is specific for canning foods. There's differences between pressure cookers and pressure canners, and you wanna make sure that yours does canning. Most pressure cookers may not do canning unless it specifically says that it can do so. Pressure cookers have digital readouts and they're not as accurate as some of these pressure canners as far as measuring the exact PSI that might be inside of your pressure cooker or canner. You wanna make sure that you're using one for canning specifically. Some items that may be canned, such as some vegetables and fruits, have acidity levels that are low enough uh, that they do not need to be boiled in excess of 212 degrees. So in this case, you can just do a typical boiling uh, canning method. But for uh, items that have a pH of 4.6 or higher, they recommend pressure canning to kill a certain bacteria that thrives on those higher pH levels Therefore, we need to make sure that we're putting enough pressure inside of this to actually raise that temperature up. By putting 15 pounds of PSI, we can actually reach levels about 240 degrees inside of that, which will actually kill those bad bacteria. This is really important because the bacteria that we're talking about is odorless and tasteless, but it can be actually fatal in some cases. Uh, it's very, very rare, but I wouldn't take the chance. Just get yourself a canner. You'll also need mason jars, okay? These are rated for canning. Make sure that you're using ones. These are uh, ball brand specific ones. These have the uh, canning collars and the lids. They're brand new. Make sure you're using new ones. Um, I've already sanitized and cleaned all of these. You'll want to do that ahead of time. You can do that by boiling them. There's a procedure on how to do that. I should just put them all in star sand and let them soak for a little while. So these specific ones are pint size. You can go up to uh, quart size if you want to, but these pint sizes are gonna allow us to make a smaller condensed version of that wort. And then we're going to add water when we cr actually create our starter later on. But these will be small enough when I have 10 of them, they'll be easier to store. So that's why we're making a condensed version. And so what we're really gonna be doing is creating a, uh, a wort that's about 1090. And then when we add it up to a liter, it's actually gonna to get to our 1035 or 1.035 uh, range, which is perfect for a yeast starter. So what we're gonna be doing is putting a little bit of dry malt extract, which is something else that you'll need. I prefer using uh, light DME. Um, we're gonna be adding four ounces in each of these mason jars. We're gonna be filling them up with a, uh, about eight ounces of water. And then we're gonna be adding a little bit of yeast nutrient also in each one, about a, a quarter teaspoon. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna put them all in our pressure canner, and then we're going to uh, let them heat up. Uh, we're gonna go through that process. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'll show you the final product at the end. You're also gonna need a scale to do some measuring out. I would suggest also using some plastic wrap. We're gonna spread that over because this DME that we're gonna be using is awful light powder and you're gonna spill some. It's just inevitable. That makes for a quick cleanup. Also, you're going to need some measuring uh, spoons. In this case, I have a one fourth, which we're gonna be using for our yeast nutrient and some larger ones that I'll use to scoop the DME. These, once you get them all made, can last up to 40 years in a closet, as long as you're keeping them in a dark, cool space. Depending on what style pressure cooker that you have may limit how many uh, mason jars that you can put in the bottom of each one of them. I was able to put 10 in the bottom here, so I'm gonna be making 10 total, uh, just because that's how many I can fit in this canner and I'm not gonna do multiple batches. You also don't need to buy a pressure canner. You can borrow one. Maybe your grandma, your mima, your aunt, your neighbor, they have one, use it for a couple of hours and then give it back, right? But if you do wanna buy one, I will have a relatively inexpensive one linked in the video description. You can check those out along with the pint-sized mason jars that will fit about 10 of those inside of this particular unit. 
All right, so I have a towel down. That's gonna help with easy cleanup as well. And then I have this plastic wrap. It's hard to see on the video probably, but I have some plastic wrap just draped over the top of my um, scale here. And the reason is that I don't want it to be tucked under is I don't want it to mess with or interfere with the measurement at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just drape it over just like I'm doing. That's gonna prevent any DME from uh, getting in there and making this thing all sticky at the end of the day. So we're gonna put our first mason jar on here. We're gonna tear it, uh, make sure it's on ounces, and now it's at zero, right? We're gonna be adding four ounces of DME, dry malt extract, to each one of these mason jars. All right, now that we have our four ounces in our mason jar, we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up to about the neck, just about an inch or so maybe a little bit less with some filtered water. Again, you don't want chlorine in this water. You can use spring water, that kind of thing, or you can just use filtered water. I use mine for my refrigerator with a filter. So we're gonna put that for about an inch or so lower than the lid. And that will allow for the expansion and contraction of the liquid as we're going through that canning process. And so we need that little bit of head space in order to make a good seal for our mason jar lid. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and use like a fork or a spoon uh, to go ahead and stir this thing around, get the uh, dry malt extract kind of broken up. If there are some clumps and stuff in there, I, the reason I use a fork is so I can kind of crush them up against the sidewall of the mason jar a little bit and then uh, stir them up and break them up. And last but not least, we're gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of yeast nutrient inside of each one of the mason jars and give that one last good stir around. That's gonna be good because when we go to make a yeast starter eventually, we'll have that yeast nutrient already in here. We don't have to worry about it. Something like a proper starter or fast pitch uh, from Northern Brewer, those already have yeast nutrient in it. So we're basically mimicking that. If you need to, again, go ahead and add just a little bit more volume. Make sure it's less than an inch or so, inch to a, about a three quarters of an inch from the top. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one of these lids very loosely on the top, right? So we wanna be able to turn it until it starts giving us some resistance. We don't wanna hand tighten it really tight down, uh, but just about where we can do it with one hand before it starts turning on this thing. And then we're gonna put it off to the side in our canner. All right, so now all I have to do is make about nine more of those and we'll be good to go. All right, another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you wipe the seal or the lid where the seal is going to be formed anyway, down because inevitably you'll probably drop a little bit of DME and anything on this lid surface here uh, can cause it to not get a proper seal. So you wanna make sure that you wipe down the tops of these jars, especially because that DME is really sticky like this spot here, and that could prevent the lid from sealing correctly uh, in your canner. All right, and then after you've wiped off all of the rims, go ahead and just again, hand tighten these down. You do not wanna do them just enough to where they start getting some resistance and that's it. And then the vacuum sealing, when this thing heats up and cools down, will we'll actually seal the lids in place. All right, so I was actually only able to get about seven cans of wort because I ran out of DME. So that's my own fault, but it would have fit 10. So we'll just pretend there's 10 in here. But what I'm gonna do next is I've, re I've filled this up to the recommended three quarts of water and added a couple of uh, teaspoons or tablespoons rather of white vinegar. That's gonna help them water spots, I guess, on the outside of the mason jars. If you care about that, um, you can add that if not, don't worry about it, but three quarts of water uh, on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and add my lid. Uh, for this specific model, that's what it recommended, but go ahead and make sure you're using the uh, recommendations for your canner itself. I have a, a lock uh, area on this lid that I go ahead and I slide this and it locks like that. This weight on the top 
is specifically set for 15 pounds PSI. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this thing on our uh, burner and we're gonna let the steam come out of this for about 10 minutes or so. We're gonna go ahead and add our pressure weight on here again for 15 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and put that on. We're gonna boil this thing with under 15 pounds of pressure. It'll start shaking and rocking back and forth and hissing and rattling a little bit. Once that starts, we're gonna set a timer for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're just gonna shut our burner completely off. We're gonna let it sit there and cool naturally. Don't try to take this thing apart. Don't try to open it. We're just gonna let it cool all the way down, let the pressure uh, unbuild, and that's what's gonna eventually seal those cans. So we're gonna come back tomorrow morning. I'm gonna let that sit overnight. All right, we are back the next morning. It is about um, 10 hours later or so, I would guess. The pot itself is actually still warm to the touch. It's not hot, so it's not gonna burn anything, but I can feel that the water temperature is still warm. It's not cold. And so it takes quite a while for these to cool down. Don't rush the cooling process. You wanna make sure that those jars get those good vacuum seals on them. Also, don't try and take the pressure regulator off until the pressure has been reduced fully inside of the pot. Uh, you know, your, use your manufacturer's instructions, but specifically mine has a pop valve thing here that tells when there's any pressure in the lid itself, and that needs to be fully depressed back down before you take off this pressure regulator here um, or open the lid. And so I haven't opened this yet. We're gonna go ahead uh, and check the jars and make sure that they have a good seal on them. In the meantime, this morning, have yourself a different brew in the Cityscape mug. Check out the store below. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this lid taken off here. And we're gonna check our jars. So it looks like these things were boiling pretty vigor vigorously. And uh, some of them may have came a little bit out of the uh, jars and that's totally fine but we should have something that looks like this when we get all said and done. So we have our wort, it's all in here. And then we're gonna check the lids of these things. You should be able to not depress down. There should be a good seal. Before these things get sealed, they will have a, a, a bubble on the top that you can press down. These, if they're, as long as they're sealed real good, um, they should be all depressed down. You should not be able to, um, you know, press any of them down with your finger. It's okay if the water in here has a little of discoloration because these boil inside of here. And so you, you're gonna have some of that come out the top of these lids and that's that's totally fine. Uh, but we'll have to give these, good, these guys a good wipe down. That's why I have this towel over here to put these on top of when they come back out. So I would take a wet rag and then just go over the outside of these things real good. Make sure you take off any of that sticky wort that might have leaked a little bit outside of each of these lids. And last but not least, what you'll want to do is take this collar off slowly and test. You can still wipe outside of that because there'll still be some stickiness underneath the collar. And then you want to test the seal a little bit. So you want to make sure that you can't lift this thing off and still pick up that jar. You don't want to pry it because that will actually open the seal, but you want to make sure that that has a good seal and in fact these do. So now these will be shelf stable for about four years or more even. They're really uh, preserved. They've, been, they've killed all of that harmful bacteria that we may have had inside of there um, and they're shelf stable. So this is exactly like a proper uh, starter canned wort uh, that you've made at home. Now, when you guys are ready to use one of these things, what you're gonna do is take your regular Eldermeyer flask, you're gonna shake this thing up real good, you're gonna pour this into your Eldermeyer flask with your stir bar, you're going to fill that water line up to a liter, and then you're gonna add your yeast, and you're ready to go. You put it on your stir plate or shake it every once in a while, depending on what uh, you have, I'd recommend a stir plate, and then this is an easy way for you to make a yeast starter for each one of your beer batches. So really this equals one of these, proper starter, fast pitch. So I'm gonna probably stop buying these things at eight bucks a pop and start making these, which are only a few cents of DME per jar. And so if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the video description below. Happy to help out. This is a cheap and easy way of making your own DIY canned wort starter. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Happy brewing and cheers.
Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. Another couple ways you can support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button or by sending a super thanks underneath any of my videos. You can also check out the merchandise in our store and hit the video on the screen right now. You know you want to.